Okay, so we're just going to do a quick rundown of the Miktronics breaker box installed with the Multi Plus 2 off grid inverter. Uh, so, with the package comes a couple of Wheeland plugs, they're quality plugs made in Germany. Uh, so, we've got our input plug and our output plug. These both plug into the bottom of the unit and they can be removed and hardwired by your electrician. These leads are just for testing. Uh, this would not comply with Australian standards as it needs to be hardwired to your generator. We have a battery lead with a 120 amp Anderson plug. And then we have our solar input leads here. Inside we've got battery main switch. You've got array one and two. In this case we've got two inputs uh, which goes to the MPPT. They come from your solar panels. This is your circuit breaker that uh, protects your MPPT itself. Then we've got our generator main switch and our inverter main switch. Over here we've got a Mitronics 4.4 kilowatt hour lithium battery. Uh, this is our standard battery. This unit can also be used with other batteries. Uh, so this comes with 86 amp hours of storage. Uh, so it's basically just plug and play. Uh, Anderson plug goes in. This is a wire connector for connecting two batteries in parallel. Then we have our Australian standard circuit breaker. We can flick that on, our battery main switch can go on, and now we have power to our inverter. So if we flick the power switch just underneath here, if we flick it forward, you'll see our inverter turn on. So now our inverter is on, and we're producing power. So what we can do is we can plug in our uh, mains input lead, and it clicks in just like that. Now if we want to remove that again, there's a small tab underneath that just pulls out like any other Wheeland plug. And now we're going to put our output cable in. Again has the same tab which can be removed. And now we have our input and output leads. Uh, so now we're going to switch on our inverter main switch which gives us power to the output and our generator main switch which gives us power to the input. Uh, now we have our MPPT, so I've got two 435 watt solar panels just sitting out in the sun in our test rig. Uh, they're coming in on this standard lead. MC4 connectors genuine as always. If we plug those in, then we can switch on our MPPT and our array will now be producing power. Now this battery is currently full, so we're going to do some load tests and show exactly how it works. Okay, so now we're just going to show how the inverter works when connected to an appliance. In this case we're just using a standard household kettle with one litre of water. And I'll show you how much energy it takes out of the battery to boil the kettle basically. So we're going to go to our Victron Connect app so we can see what's been getting pulled out of the battery. Uh, at the moment, just on standby, we've only got 13 watts. That's over 10 days of energy just on that small battery, just to stay on. Uh, a lot of the cheaper inverters use a lot of energy on standby. Uh, very inefficient, and it means you need a larger battery bank, larger solar panels with everything to go with it. So we're going to flick the kettle on. And we'll see our power ramp up. So this kettle's pulling 2,200 watts, basically. Now our time remaining is going to go down because it's averaging over a minute and that will give us a true indication of how long it will last at that power level. Now I've got the solar off at this stage just so we can see exactly what's coming out of the battery. Okay, so now we've boiled the kettle, we've used 3% of the capacity of the battery. Now the inverter's fan is on because it's done some work, it's got to cool itself down again. This will ramp down slowly until it turns off. Uh, that's why it's using slightly more power now. And we can see our time remaining going back up again. And now that we've drained some power out of the battery, we can use our solar panel to charge it back up. Normally we'd have the solar panel connected all the time. Uh, but in this case we're going to go to our breaker box solar which is our maximum power point tracker. We'll connect to that. 
and we're going to flick our solar array on. Now I've got two 435 watt Longy solar panels on a test rig. Uh, that's what we're using to charge. So you'll see the current and the power go up at the, at the start, and it will find its it will find its groove. It will find the optimum place to sit at, an optimum voltage. So it will bounce around that first, but then it will stabilise. So using the Victron Connect up, we can go in and hit the History tab as well, and we can see the past 30 days, how much energy has gone in, we can see how long the batteries are in bulk, absorption and float for. That shows us whether our batteries hit a full charge for the day, because if they get into float charge, basically they're full. And we can see our lifetime total. Now if we go back to status, we can see we've got 740 watts coming in. That's from two panels. Uh, we can go up to 1.5 kilowatts of panels with this maximum power point tracker or even larger for the 35 amp maximum power point tracker. If we want to go even larger than that again, we can switch from the Multi Plus 2 to the Easy Solar 2, which has a 70 amp maximum power point tracker. This box is compatible with that. It just doesn't have the MPVT on the front. Now if we look at our breaker box smart shunt, which shows the power going in and out of the battery, we can see our battery is charging because the power is in positive, positive 713 watts. We've got 13 amps and our time remaining is infinite. Now if I switch the kettle on again, we'll see that power go down. And now some of the power is going straight from the panels to the load and the rest uh, is coming from the batteries. Okay, now we're going to show how to charge a unit from a generator. That's a very simple operation to charge. At the moment we've got our test lead. Uh, as I mentioned before, this shouldn't be used uh, permanently. This is only a test lead. Your electrician should hardwire this to your generator so that these pins cannot be touched while the unit is on. Uh, this is for testing purposes only. So we're going to go to our Victron connector and connect to our breaker box so we can see it. At the moment we've got the solar off to simulate being uh, in the middle of the night where there's no sun. So at the moment we've got 16 watts going out. Now we can program your MultiPlus to whatever current level you want it to be. Uh, if you've got a very small generator we can limit the current not to overload the generator or if you've got a large generator we can turn the current up so that you charge faster and also transfer the loads from um, the inverter to the generator. So if we just plug in to a normal lead, this is a power source, uh, it's exactly the same as a generator, no different. The inverter will wait 30 seconds to make sure that the power quality is good. I recommend an inverted generator if possible as the power is very clean and easy to connect to. The inverter will protect itself and any loads if you have really dirty power. So if your inverter won't connect, that's more than likely the issue. So at the moment now we've got mains on, which tells us we've got power, and we're currently in bulk charge. So we can see there's 1700 watts going into the battery at the moment. Uh, and we're at 95%. Now, the inverter is very smart. I've got it currently set to eight amps limit on the input. This is so that we don't overload the lead that I'm plugged into. Uh, now if we try and pull more than that from the output, the inverter will actually take some energy from the battery and whatever energy it can from the power source that it's plugged into, such as the generator, to make up the rest. So now we've got mains on and inverter on. Because our kettle is drawing over 2000 watts, we've got 380 watts coming from the battery and the rest coming from the mains. Now if we turn the kettle back off again, we see our battery starts to charge and our bulk light is back on. Now a battery this size will charge in approximately two, th two hours at this rate. Uh, the more batteries you have, the longer it takes to charge. But the good thing about this is if you see you're running it low on power in the middle of the night or if you've got a uh, few rainy days, you can just charge up and then uh, sit back and just enjoy the power for the next 24 hours or however long till you need to charge it again.